this lady beside me decided to turn your abandoned car tires into a profitable business. My name is Ifedola Foronshewe. I'm the founder of Free Recycle Limited, a pioneer waste tire recycling company in Ibado Oil State, Nigeria. And we're on the mission to convert waste to wealth while also tackling climate change. Stop the burning of tires! You see, Nigeria accounts for 75% of the 15.5 million vehicles registered in West Africa. 70% of that 11 million vehicles happen to change their car tires every 15 months. What do you think happens to the abandoned used car tires you see on the road? Typically the waste tires would end up in your drainages, uh, causing flooding as well as breaking ground for mosquito or we often resort to burning them which also contributes to CO2 emissions and other greenhouse gases emissions as well. She has been able to turn a problem into a business. And not only does she make money from that, she employs a lot of people. Free Recycle is tackling waste by collecting waste tires, converting them to reusable, um, eco-friendly products. Like flip-flops, pavers, towels, rubber rolls, gym flooring, bags, and a lot more. So, this is her story. I'm very curious, like, out of the million and one things you could be doing right now banking finance you choose to <laughs> recycle tires what's the story I, I think curiosity got the best of me yeah it's impossible to take a five minutes drive or even a five minutes walk and not spot tires abandoned tires on abandoned the road, tires yeah. on the road. Mm -hmm. eventually they end up being dumped where they're not meant to or end up burning them the entire environment is polluted you have co2 emissions and other greenhouse gases there are three components that determine how long your car tires might last the first being the quality of the tires the age how many miles it has on it and most importantly the quality of the roads which the tires is driven on for most car owners in nigeria getting new set of tires happen every 15 months the old tires end up in tire graveyards you find some on the streets or stacked up at the local vulcanizer shop. Hello, my name is Manuel. We repair the uh, bad tire and the one is good one. This gentleman right here operates like a vulcanizer shop. It's like a place where if you have issues with your car tires, you're going to come and get it repaired. So he's saying in a whole week, he can have at least 50 abandoned car tires deposited here in his shop. These guys are very crucial in the value chain when it comes to recycling and tackling abandoned tires on the streets of Nigeria, West Africa, and generally the world. Our organizers play a very <laughs> crucial role, honestly. Yeah, I think they, it's, uh, we don't give them enough credits, right? I said yeah. to the person that the doctors of the tires, right? <laughs> Definitely. So the manufacturer has manufactured the tire, right? And you, uh, you've you gotten your tires, you're driving your car around. Chances right. are that you would have to stop over at the organizers place like couple of times before you eventually get tired and say okay you know what I give up and buy new tires yeah and so they are a point of collection actually someone was chatting with me recently and said oh I have um, someone in Lekki a organizer in Lekki that says in a month it gets as much as 200 tires oh wow in Nigeria and a lot of African countries tire waste is still a growing problem but the company founded by Ife Dolako has decided to fix this by recycling tires into finished product for everyday use. From statistics online, we generate as much as 8 million waste tires annually. 8 million waste tires? Yeah. And how many percent of that are you tackling? Not enough. How much do you think it, I don't know if you're able to find out the cost of recycling just one tire? 16,000. 16,000, that's tire. anywhere around $16 thereabout. Yeah. And how many tires do you feel you can recycle in a day? In a day, we recycle as much as 800 tires. Yo, yeah. that's a lot. All right, so I'm going to walk you guys through how the tires are processed into finished product. So the tires first get into a machine called the side ring extractor. Now what this machine does is remove the side rings in the tire. There are about two of them. So it's going to take off the side rings. As you can see over there, those are the rings just on the top. And then it's going to move into the next stage, which is the shredding. So right now, the rings have been taken off the tire and I'm going to put it on the conveyor belt and it's going to go into the shredding machine. 
where the tire is going to be shredded into little tiny bits and pieces. So after the tire goes through the shredder, it then goes into the crusher and then it goes into the big vibrator screen where it's going to single out the metal particles from the tires. During this process, the metals are separated. It then goes into a vibrating screen where the workers would remove the remnant. After that, all that is left is rubber. The final vibrating screen separates the rubbers in different sizes. The softer powder-like finishes are used for playgrounds and gym floors, while the 3-5mm to rumbles are used for driveways and interlogging. To make the pavers, the rubber crumbles twirl inside the heated mixers. The polyurethane binders help hold everything together. Over time, a right ratio for this combination has been figured out by Free Recycle. When we all came together, right, none of us had experience in tire recycling. It was... <laughs> just hustling it, it out. Was two, it's been two, three years of constant R&D. And R&D, nobody told me this, but R&D is expensive. Yeah. It's been very, very expensive, the learning curve of trying to come up with the right product, the product formulation as it pertains to you know Nigeria, our climate and then when you start looking at exporting as well you're wondering or you're looking at oh, what, uh, what do we need to tweak to make this work for this country where you're exporting to their climate, what certifications do you need to have in place and all that. Yeah. So it's been three years of actually wow. putting so much sweat um, and investment into the business. And then the next stage, they dye the rubbers into different colors. After mixing everything, we yeah. bring it to this place and we use the hydraulic press to press everything yeah. into the sizes that we want. Then we take it into this little room yeah. to make it dry. You know, we have added binder to it, everything. So uh -huh. after like three hours, four hours, we have to take it out. Then after it's dry, it will come out in this shape. What is this machine doing? This is the machine that we cut it into different sizes that we rubber roll. Oh, okay. It turns it into a rubber roll. Yes, different sizes. Okay. So it's the one that we cut it into this, this little size. size. Yes. So this one is 5 mm. From this now, what do you do with this? Okay, this is rubber roll. Rubber roll. Yes, it depends on the sizes that we want to cut it into. Yeah. Like this one now. This is 1 meter by 5 meter. Oh, okay. So, so this, uh, this material can be sold, this particular one, I know the gym people on the yes. gym floors. Yes, gym they floor. Need, they need something like you this. You can use it for yoga mats also. Yoga mat as well. Then prayer mat, those Muslims that they want They're to pray, use for yeah. prayer. But it's very heavy, eh? It's heavy. So what is this guy doing now? That rubber roll. I told you we have different sizes. Yeah. That one is 5 mm. Five. This one is 10. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the thickness yeah. now. So this one is 10 mm. So even in stadiums, the running track, yes. they put this as well. Yes, 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 yes. It's great to actually see how these things are produced because I use them every day. I mean, at the gym, I see them in the stadium. I never knew like they were made out of like tires. So it's very interesting to see like a huge big tire comes to this. This is a doormat. We can cut it into this size. Does this machine do the design as well? Yes. So interlogging stones. Yes. So some of them, the ones that we're used to, they're, they're done with concrete but this is done with rubber. I see this coming in very handy in like multiple ways. Easy to clean. If you have children at home that fall down on the ground that has this surface, they don't get injury because this is rubber. Even if your phone fall on it, yeah. nothing will happen. And rain doesn't damage it. No matter how much water you pour on it, it doesn't damage it. And as you can see, it looks very beautiful. It looks very neat. Because you know with the concrete ones, after a while, pyrogyra and grass would grow on it. But in this case, you can see like it's just very plain and very neat. Even the skating actually, the skating as well are done with tires. All right, so this uh, interlocking, about 40 of it makes a square meter. So uh, I think more people should actually embrace this. More durable. Not only are you buying a product, you're also helping get rid of abandoned car tires on the road by getting yourself <laughs> uh, interlocking like this for your exterior in your home, you know? So how many products do you recycle into right now? We have the pavers, uh, we have the tiles. Then on our other production line, we make the rubber rolls, which are quite versatile. And application range includes expansion joint for construction, 
you have the installation materials for uh, for several room electrical workstation, oh, okay. gym flooring, oh, okay. uh, transportation yeah. flooring as well. Our product can be adapted to for refurbishment of buses, ships, uh, badges, and all that. And then you have the products for playgrounds as well. We recently oh, commenced okay. wet pour system for playground. It's been you know that's been applied in the UK and the US for a very long time. Yeah, but we recently started that in Nigeria as well and I'm very proud about that. Also, the one that I'm most excited about is um, us breaking out into the sustainable fashion industry. We recently started manufacturing flip-flops, slippers okay, right. and slides. You guys are making yes. flip-flops. I mean, come closer. So these are like your everyday flip-flops you can use to have your bath, but I can see it has like the sole is harder. So this is actually the tire. Yes. This is the tire. These are products. Yeah. So, and uh, one of the benefits is that when you wear it in the bedroom, yeah, it will not be... You can't sleep. You can't sleep. Yeah. And then it's very uh, strong and then it's very, it's very, very, very yeah. unique as you can see. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite strong, guys. Like the back is made of tire. It's made of tire, yes. So when you buy things like this, know that you're helping take away tires from the street. <laughs> <laughs> and these ones are hard to work. Yeah, you can this see one, some tires. Like these, these, yeah. Yes, for decoration and then something like hard to work like this. Yeah, for all of these work. with tires. Yes, with tires. Interesting. This is a bag, actually. Not all the components here is done with tires, but the base right here is done with tires. This design here is done with tires and you have it over here. Yes, and yeah. over here as well. Yes. So you know, this, uh, the reason why we use this is because most of the parts that we can see yeah. that we use this tire, they are the part where the back normally gets spoiled. Mm. Is the, the, that's where it gets spoiled back. first. Yeah. So by using this tire to cover them, it it will make it, yeah. make it a, a very good one and a unique, yeah. very lasting <laughs> bag. Very nice bag. All right. The opportunities are endless. Uh, we keep you know, working, uh, innovation is one thing we are very, very keen on. What has happened here in the past three years, I feel like it's record breaking. To be able to bring people together from different backgrounds, different experiences. To come and help here. solve a problem, actually. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, and at, at first, there are days when you sit and you're like, can this work? And, yeah. you know, you just have one person say, oh, I think this can work. And you think outside the box, you know, it's collective effort. effort. What's the challenge you have with this kind of business? power infrastructural issues you have power being top on the list we scaled up late last year we got yeah. a tire crushing line that had more capacity our existing transformer could power have power so we've been running that crushing line on generator oh, wow. generator. so you generate your own electricity at least 80 percent of our own electricity and that's your number one challenge number one challenge it would be good to see more people join tire recycling especially for it's capital intensive so access to funds funding as well is one of the critical issues that we're faced with very beginning we got some of our funding from a commercial bank as well as the bank of industry and what's the staff strength right now staff strength as of today we have 148 this, however, that number is going to go up again because of the steel recycling as well as the manufacturing of uh, flip-flops. That number will go up. So we might be pushing 200 uh, before the end of Q1. Yeah. So it's been three years of actually wow. putting so much sweat um, and investment into the business. Yeah. All right. So what's the future of free recycle? Future of free recycle. Um, set, setting up in multiple locations. Oh, okay. Locations, sorry. Um, expanding to include more waste materials. Yeah. Um, when I say multiple locations, it's not limited to Nigeria. Definitely. Hopefully. It could be in Ghana, it could be in Togo, it could be <laughs> in More Sierra African Island. countries, because yeah. the issues we're tackling here is not, is not you know, peculiar to just Nigeria. Everybody own cars. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. yeah and with the waste to wealth tagline, I hope in the future, free recycle will be able to recycle everything from paper waste to pet bottles. More organizations should step in and assist in cleaning Nigeria, Africa and the world. I hope to find more entrepreneurs building sustainable businesses like Ifedolakor in and around Africa and share their stories. Subscribe to the channel and wait for the next video.